Hello and welcome. Amidst a lot of excitement this week, the government released a new education policy 2020, wanting to get the best possible education for one's child. It cuts across social boundaries, it unites all Indian parents. So why then is one aspect in particular of this new policy, the first in 28 years that talks of much needed reform in the education system causing consternation and debate. I'm talking about the prescription in the NEP that Indian students should from now on be taught in their mother tongue or their regional language or a home language. I'm not sure what that actually means up to class five and preferably even until class eight. Is it, as critics say, the RSS agenda of Hindiization of the country? And are we in the process depriving millions of young Indians the opportunity to exploit the best of global opportunities? Is this government's anti-English drive being anti-poor? Let's first go across to New York. We have Dr. Arvind Panagaria. He's a former economic advisor to the Modi government as a former VP of uh, the Niti Ayo, currently a professor, uh, back to being professor at uh, Columbia University. Uh, Professor Panagaria, you know, your latest book uh, is uh, India Unlimited, Reclaiming the Lost Glory is its title. In it, you have assessed the higher education system, drawing comparisons with the US, UK, China on the output and productivity of the Indian system. But in your view, uh, specifically on this aspect of the NEP, the teaching of instruction till, till class five being in one's mother tongue, something that the Sangh Parivar has constantly insisted upon in the past, can that set India on an unlimited path of growth and wealth creation? Uh, so, Sarah, uh, let me just first say, this is not an aspect that I covered in my book. Nevertheless, yeah. I'll give you my view on it. Um, you know, uh, first of all, I don't like this to be, the, the whole issue to be phrased in terms of RSS versus non-RSS, because there is a large body of academic literature, in fact, on, you know, uh, whether, children learn better uh, when taught in their mother tongue uh, versus being taught in a different yes. language. Defenders uh, of it so, do so point is, that out. So, so let's phrase the, phrase the question in those terms rather than you know RSS versus non-RSS. I think that convolutes the whole conversation in my opinion. Um, so as far as I'm personally concerned, you know, I went to a Hindi school and, and I'm glad that I did. Uh, because uh, I, I, it, it sort of grounded me a lot better into India. Uh, and, and eventually, you know, I needed to learn English, which I did uh, 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 once I, you know, got to ninth grade or so. Hmm. Um, uh, and, and I picked up better in college. Now, in terms of the policy here, I see a bit of a conflict between what may be an overall public country interest versus an individual interest, because we have already hmm. created a system in which there is a premium on learning English language. So as an individual, clearly, I think, you know, uh, 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 parents would like their children to learn English. Uh, as a nation, do children actually learn better in vernacular? I think there's a lot of evidence uh, mm. in my own personal experience, I would say as well, uh, uh, in that direction. So that's the sort of, you know, uh, conflict uh, that, that arises in this. Uh, I don't think it's going to be easy in any, any way to switch today because, you know, the history matters. Hmm. And uh, given the current history, uh, it seems to me that it's going to be very difficult uh, for any government to actually change this. All also, right. Mr. Panagra, uh, just last point. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Just one last point that, you know, this is just a broad policy. Uh, the government is definitely not bound by this. Ultimately, the issue will be what the legislation that implements the policy looks like. Okay, uh, but you brought up your own personal example. I'm glad you did because clearly you've said it's helped you. Uh, you started learning English in class nine. You uh, built on it yourself, but you also said it gave you good grounding in India. But professionally, um, Mr. Panagaria, you've been a chief economist at the Asian Development Bank, that you worked at the World Bank, the IMF, the WTO. These are all international for us. So you've spent most of uh, your professional life uh, abroad. Would students brought up in an education policy that doesn't focus on English, maybe until class eight or nine like you did, be able to follow the professional career path you have taken if that's their aspiration? Well, I, I, I think uh, 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 not everyone actually follows that path and those who want to follow that path can do it. I mean, look, you know, if I did it- You are proof of that. Uh, obviously, <laughs> there is a way to do it. 
Uh, and I should correct myself. I think you know I probably started learning in school. English got introduced on this in the sixth grade, perhaps. Okay. Uh, but the medium of instruction, even in college, actually had remained Hindi, uh, except that you know personally I switched to English. Uh, so it certainly can be done. I mean, look, you know, uh, my best examples I think of are uh, countries like South Korea, China. Hmm. They all do it in their own languages, and where they need to learn English, they learn it. Uh, you know, now uh, you know. I remember in the 1980s when the students from China came uh, uh, to the United States, uh, the English was extremely poor. That has completely changed now. Now, you know, the, the Chinese students that come in, they have fluent English. Uh, Chinese students from South Korea, they all, I'm sorry, the students from South Korea, they all uh, uh, do well. So then why, uh, so, then would Indian students be at a disadvantage? But thank you, um, Dr. Panagaria, you've kick-started this conversation. Thank you for your time joining us today uh, from New York. All right, let's uh, bring in Shivam Vij, uh, journalist, advocate, Nandita Rao, Chandra B. Sharma, former chairman of the National Open University. Uh, Shivam Vij, to you first, you heard Mr. Panagaria, but you've written uh, an article where you say the mother tongue fanatics are keeping India a poor backward country. Why do you say that? Well, I think the evidence is clear. A lot of people are saying that there's a lot of evidence that children learn better in their mother tongue. But just look around us, uh, the successful people in various fields are all people who went to English medium schools there is a reason why most of india most parents uh, want to send their children to english medium schools if they can afford it it's because everybody can see that the successful people in india are people who went to english medium schools i think uh, examples like those of uh, dr banagriya you'll find them many but they are in a minority they are the exception who prove the rule the rule in india is that people who go to english medium schools have access to uh, global professions, a global elite, but even within India, you know, if you look at uh, our medical colleges, our engineering colleges, mm. students who come from a non-English medium background actually have a very difficult time coping up. Sadly, yeah. if you look at the suicides that take place in our engineering and medical colleges, um, of especially of uh, SCSC students, you will find that they invariably went to non-English medium schools. So for modern professions, for uh, global uh, professions, for global mobility, for IT, for all kinds of mm. things, uh, in India you need English. Of course, you give the examples, people give the examples of Japan, Germany, even China now, uh, Italy, um, France, all kinds of countries that have done well uh, despite having their own languages, their own mother tongues as the medium of instruction. Mm. But that has not worked in India. There's, so there's, there is clearly a language divide which we need to accept and recognize. And if students learn better in their mother tongue, then how is it that students who went to English uh, medium schools are doing much better in India? And India is dominated uh, by people who went to English medium schools. Uh, Mr. Chan, uh, Professor Sharma, you are disagreeing. I see you uh, shaking your head vociferously. But, uh, you know, Professor Panagaria uh, pointed out that now Chinese students, by the time they reach the U.S., they know the English, they're learning their English. Uh, Shivam which points that out. Uh, we've had this advantage when it comes to the IT sector. Uh, why would we want to give that advantage up? Uh, Sarah, I completely disagree with the co-panelist who was speaking in favor of English. As a linguist, I'll say, uh, all those who study in mother tongue tend to do better in life. And up to the age of, say, about eight, nine, we have the capacity, as Chomsky also says, the innate capacity to learn multiple languages together. Now, we are not realizing the fact that we push out millions of students in India out of school because we have a major language of the region or English as the medium of instruction in the initial years. Don't forget those children who speak Khadiya, Kho, Santhali, Mundari, Maithili, Bhojpuri are pushed out of school because they are put in a class where the language is Hindi. Let us not make it an English, Tamil, Hindi divide at the moment. The policy is brilliant in its exposure to language policy. I would very strongly insist that if children are given initial years education, what the policy says from three years to eight years in mother tongue, 
millions of students who drop out of the school because they don't understand anything in class one because the medium of instruction as we understand is only 22 languages of the eighth schedule and these are not languages of most of the indians even in tamil nadu all children do not speak tamil they have a different dialect of tamil in which the initial years must be taught i am reminded of the bharat vani project that honorable minister smriti irani started and said we must have initial year education in mother tongue and i can clearly see that major portion of the policy section 1 and 2 of the school education mm. is dominated by the theme of retaining okay. children okay. if you do Shivam, not provide quick them response, education I bring in mother tongue, they will drop out and don't forget as Pani, uh, uh, mr panigaria has said we are most of us who are doing well in life are able to express ourselves in english are not from families which had english as their language we learned it very late in life okay. i started okay. learning english at about All class right. 6 or Shivan, 7 quick response so, yeah, I have many things to say, but I'll keep it short. Uh, sir meant uh, Sa Santhali la language. I would like to point out that Santhali's mother tongue is not Hindi. So why should we, they be taught in Hindi and not in Santhali if mother tongue is the idea? And if they're, if, if they're taught in Santhali, uh, what career prospects await them? Well, okay. Let me also bring in uh, Nandita. Uh, Mr. Chandra, you raised that point about... Uh, the, the defenders of this policy, Nandita, say that point to research that shows that children learn best in one's mother tongue. But as Shivan points out, whose mother tongue is it anyway? What about children who are born of mixed backgrounds? Nandita, Rao, your parents uh, are uh, from different states. What is your, what was your home language as the new uh, NEP uh, describes it? You studied uh, in uh, Hindi medium school until class five, I think. Where do you stand on this? So I, uh, I completely disagree with all the speakers uh, today because first of all, I feel this uh, mother tongue education system is okay in unilingual countries like uh, Europe. But in a diverse country like ours, which is multilingual, hmm. and yet we have a lot of intra-country migration. That is the beauty of our country. Hmm. People from the South live in the North. People from the north live in the south. Indians from across the country marry each other. And uh, we have unity and diversity. So to say that, you know, each state, uh, it will be mandatory to, uh, you know, uh, study in your mother tongue. But what is our mother tongue? For most, most Indians, in a way, English is our mother tongue. Because even people from Hindi-speaking or Tamil-speaking families, when they go to, to another state, the only language in which we communicate with each other is English. Mm. And mm. I think English is no longer a colonial language because it's become the global language. Exactly. Even the French, the Germans and the That's Chinese excellent. are learning English. So I think no. if we have to fight colonization, we have to fight it at a deeper level. And I'll come to that. That's another very major problem with the new economic policy that they're selling out on higher education to USA where India is actually a world leader. But coming back to primary education, so my mother tongue or my home language was English because my mother was Punjabi and my father was Andhra. But I went to a Hindi medium school till class five, Sardar Patel Vidyale, and I learned Hindi, which I think is an advantage. I read, write, and speak Hindi like a UPI or a, a, you know, a, a native Hindi speaker. Because at that age, you can pick up a language. So when I came to class six, because I came from an English-speaking family, for me, the transition was very soon. Okay. But for a lot of my classmates, hmm. and remember, Sadat Patel was a public school where people from the middle and upper middle class studied. Yeah. But yet, the children who were from Hindi-speaking families, middle school, uh, you know, their self-confidence dropped their interest in studies dropped because suddenly there was a switch to English. Mm. So, I mean, I think where, uh, you know, government servants, your child is studying everything, including maths and Tamil, and suddenly you're posted in Rajasthan. Mm. So I, I think we have to get over this policy, whatever form okay. of jingoism it brings up in people. Okay. But this is, a, is not new, it's a failed policy. 
Okay, but um, uh, Mr. Sharma says Beautiful. that this is a, it's an excellent policy, but I want to see, is it really practical on the ground? Alinda Mari uh, joins us from Eduki in uh, Kerala, and you tweeted that this will basically encourage or force people to only stay and work in their home states, and women particularly, no. you think, will be affected, which is something that, you know, Nandita has touched upon, that it will force people to work and stay in their home states. What do you mean by that? How is that? Uh, yes, I would... Yeah, I would like to talk with an example. Uh, suppose I am a person living in Kerala and I have a kid. And this particular kid is being educated in Malayalam, um, uh, uh, her primary schooling. And suppose I get a transfer to say Maharashtra or Tamil Nadu. And uh, I have to switch from Kerala to uh, Maharashtra. And my child, if she comes along with me, she will be educated in Marathi or Tamil later on. So suppose we stick with uh, Marathi. Uh, so, um, my child was studying in uh, uh, Malayalam until say class 3 or 4 and suddenly she switches to what? Marathi, an, mm. uh, an altogether new language. Mm. And again, this is not about studying a particular language, this is, study, this is about studying in a particular language. Yeah. So, uh, there are four major concerns that I have with this. First thing is how will this affect uh, the migration and employment within the country? Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, important important like, uh, questions. I'm glad you raised it up and you yep, uh, joined us as a student. Question. So the voice of a yeah, student, uh, 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 voice uh, of a woman, uh, you know, also I think then the onus would fall on women as mothers mm -hmm. to then focus on the, you know, making sure the children catch up and what does this mean for their uh, professional careers. But again, I want to talk about how practical this is on the ground. So let's go across to Anand Kumar, well known, needs no introduction, founder of the Super 30 uh, program. He's a mathematics uh, educator, best known for the Super 30 program, run out of Bihar, which coaches underprivileged students of the II, for IIT and JEE and um, uh, uh, Mr. Kumar, sab log yahan pe keh ki research shows that children learn best in one's mother tongue. But mother tongue kya hoga? Aapke experience mein when you get these students from underprivileged uh, backgrounds, um, are they, would it be better for them to be educated in English earlier or should it come later? Uh, and do we have teachers? Teachers mil sakte to teach English, uh, math, uh, physics, chemistry in Hindi or uh, whatever the uh, mother tongue is? Yes, yes. If you have seen the the जो अमीर बच्चे हैं वो इंग्लिश मीडियम के स्कूल से पढ़ते हैं अच्छा करते हैं मैनेजमेंट स्कूल में पढ़ते हैं अब दूसरा मेरा जो अंडर प्रिविलेज परिवार का बच्चा है उसके पास सुविधाएं नहीं स्कूल नहीं जाते हैं तो शिक्षा जो है वो अमीरों के चौखट की गुलाम बन गई है अब जो न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी लाया गया है इस पॉलिसी के तहत जो छोटे-छोटे अंडर प्रिविलेज घर के बच्चे उनको डेफिनेटली फायदा होगा क्योंकि मैं ये अपने अनुभव के अपने एक्सपीरियंस के आधार पर बता रहा हूं उनको स्कूल जाने में अच्छा लगेगा स्कूल में जो बातें होंगी वो सुनने में अच्छा लगेगा और बातें समझ में भी आएंगी और जो एजुकेशन के प्रति हुआ है डर है वो खत्म जहां तक बात ही हमारे पहले के जो स्पीकर्स हैं वक्ताओं ने बोला कि उनको बात में प्रॉब्लम हो गया ऐसा नहीं चाहे कुली के बच्चे हो ऑटो ड्राइवर के बच्चे हो जो कि अपने हिंदी में पढ़ते हैं मामूली लैंग्वेज में भी अपने घरेलू भाषा में भी पढ़ के बातचीत करके आते हैं तो जहां तक आपने पूछा पढ़ाने की बात तो हम लोग राइटिंग इंग्लिश में करते हैं और बोलते हिंदी में धीरे-धीरे धीरे-धीरे बच्चा जब आईआईटी में जाता है तो वहां बहुत कुछ सीखता है और आज सुपर 30 का बच्चा जिसको एक वर्ड ठीक से इंग्लिश नहीं आता था अमेरिका इंग्लैंड जापान अच्छे जगह पर काम कर रहा है अगर वैसे बच्चों को शुरू से रीजनल लैंग्वेज में पढ़ने का मौका मिलेगा तो डेफिनेटली वो अच्छा करेगा Thank you, Anand Kumar ji, for the work that you've been doing uh, all these years. But I want to, as we close up, the point is, the fact is that we need a unifying language. As uh, Nandita pointed out, we're a country with many states, many languages, uh, a unified language of choice across Indian states for the private sector, for the government sta sector in states like Tamil Nadu. Markets can't operate uh, if there's uh, no unified language. So who will decide what that unified language will be? Mr. Sarvanan of the uh, DMK's uh, spokesperson, what will that language be? be see, we will it be hindi this is a well settled question no no it can never be hindi <laughs> see it is already a well settled question when uh, the, the constitutional uh, the assembly when it uh, the constituent assembly when it met they decided that they wanted to make hindi as the national language 
but they said no nothing doing it can't be done they said uh, english and hindi will be the official language and english is the perfect unifying language because it levels the field for everybody mm. it is neutral for me it is neutral for someone from uttar pradesh it is mm. neutral for from someone from west bengal but when you make hindi as the unifying language it gives an undue advantage mm. for people who speak hindi and people who are not native speakers of hindi so hindi can never be accepted as a unifying language it will create a class of citizens a first class citizens who speak hindi and a second class citizens who does not speak hindi so we will never accept that and we have had hindi agitations hindi uh, agitations against imposition of hindi when you are speaking of hindi as a unifying language then it means you are trying to impose hindi okay. on people who does right. not want to study all hindi all right so that's of course an issue the government is going to have to deal with going forward but mr chandraman uh, uh, what to you and then closing to shivam vij you know many um, political observers when they talk about this have pointed out that while the government is pushing for this most of uh, senior ministers send their children for higher education abroad now you know mr ravi shankar prasad had tweeted a picture of his child going off to study in boston university i think in the end it's about a parent's aspiration and if my, this parent wants their child to study english and take a certain path why is it that only certain parents can enjoy that moment of pride and joy of sending their children off to study uh, abroad and not others see first of all i'll say 3% of indians speak english and are when we support english are we supporting only those 3% of the population which has which knows english and which will succeed if english is made the language one two we have been quoting that more than 20 million children are pushed out there are 2 crore children out of school today because they could not cope with the language of school in the initial years what we are talking of and what this policy talks of is how to retain these children who come okay. from the poor families all right shivam is closing poor, argument to you is definitely not poor i know he is my friend I, I, and we have studied together and I, when we all right uh, mr that mr sharma i'm out of time let me give shivam also no. some time when we closing argument because of lack of infrastructure because of caste discrimination not because of language because of bad teachers correct that's yes, one exactly. point shivam closing yes, argument yes. राइट Okay, no, 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 closing no, no, no. argument. I'm out of time. No. Yeah, We will no, debate no, this. No, I'm sure no, further no, on other shows too. Shivam, no, go ahead. Ten children because no, I think no, no. I think you know the no, no. way Mr. Sharma is not letting me speak is a good example no, no, no. of how the Hindi wala, so the language wala, just want to drown out everybody else with their political self righteousness. The fact of the matter is that these students are leave school because they are taught in Shuddh Hindi, which is not their mother tongue. It is some artificial new language. created by the raj bhasha committee super sanskritized it is not the language that people speak in their homes and that is why they have ruined both well we hope what we've tried and we aspire to do on the show is try and bring our viewers all the various points of view uh, on this topic we hope we've done that tonight and you can hear all the very points of view uh, on our panel tonight thank you all for joining us thank you for uh, joining us on we the people a show where we believe it's important to speak up but it's also important to listen thank you all good night